Welcome to part two of the What is System Level Thermal Fluid Analysis series. Today, we're going to look at the dynamics of fluids and why they are not all created equal. When we last spoke, we talked about the array of different types of thermal fluid systems used in different industries and the vast amount of information required for their design and maintenance. At their core, all of these systems are engineered to take a fluid from a source and deliver it to a receiving point. And with thermal fluid analysis at the system level, you can ensure the proper delivery of flow rates and temperatures while minimizing pressure drops. At its most basic, a thermal fluid network consists of a series of components that model the physics behind each part, and it's connected in a way that represents the real life system. And while the physical design of the system and its components has the largest effect on its performance, we can't ignore the contribution of fluid properties. Our everyday experiences with fluids make it clear that they can possess very different characteristics. For instance, walking through the fresh air is a very different experience to swimming across a pool full of water. Or if you've ever tried to get ketchup out of a bottle, you know it's a much slower process than pouring water out of that same bottle. Even the same fluid can look and behave differently at different temperatures and pressures. For instance, a boiling kettle contains water in two distinct phases as well as an intermediate two-phase condition. From an engineer's perspective, accounting for changes in fluid properties and energy content throughout a system is complex. Some thought has to go into the level of detail appropriate to achieve the correct balance between useful accuracy and solution complexity. For example, air circulating through the ventilation network of an aircraft's cabin may reasonably be modeled using an ideal gas assumption, but the same may not be true of a high-pressure gas line where a real gas model, though more computationally expensive, would be more appropriate. And if considering a system with non-Newtonian fluids, it can prove even more complex, such as with latex paint or sand and water. As you apply a sheer strain to these fluids, paint starts to flow easier, while the sand and water wants to flow less due to their opposite changes in viscosity. Without accurate rheological data for these types of fluids, it would be very difficult to run an accurate flow simulation. An additional concern could be the physics of phase change. Over the years, experimentalists have derived numerous correlations to account for thermal fluid behavior of two-phase fluids. But to accurately model a system's flow behavior, it's critical to select the one most appropriate for a given situation. Next time, we'll talk about pressure drop, a toll that must be paid to the law of thermodynamics. And don't forget to download the white paper, What is System Level Thermal Fluid Analysis, to learn more.